Damn. Yeah. Gonzaga. Man, I, I, those boys just played shit. Hey, 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 Hello, everyone, and again, welcome to the Buffalo Chasers podcast. Uh, we're streaming at you live from 
Fort Peck Community College here on April 8th, 2021. I believe we are at week number 28 of our podcast, still going strong uh, every week, coming at you Thursdays from 3 to about 4 p.m. ish. Uh, today's topic, I think we're going to delve into a little bit of uh, virtues, I believe, but uh, we always like to start off in a good way. So I ask uh, Dek Shi if uh, if you're able to, to share a prayer with us, I would appreciate that, Dek Shi. Oh, oh, me. Oh, 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 how oh, 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 Mushia keni taki e pi unchi ma kao mani na hawaiaza pi na chante yoksi o mani oi chaki apo ushu i chalapo. A tu kashi la na wa kantanka. Kiksi apo mi taki e pi na ha wi nuk chalapi na wi chak chalapi na. Wa kain japi hukshi la pi un chin chalapi na. Koshka pi na wi koshka pi chanku wa shte un kupi wi choza ni un kupi okia wa ushu i chalapo. Na tu kashi la makantanga o yate o nyasi chanku luta aga o mani o wi chaki apo ushu wi chalapo. Kiksi apo mitaki api agichita o yate ki zuya ekta na wi chasha bile na wina bile chanku wa shte unk upi okia wa ushu wi chalapo. Kiksi apo mitaki api wanyama o yate ki na ha koshka api wi koshka api wina api na wi chasha api agnago pita ushi anke okia cha wa ushu wi chalapo. A tu kashi la wa kanta ka wopi la chichia na ha ampetu wa shte ma ku na ha ushia ke mitaki e pi agna gupta computer hecha na ha ushia ke okia cha wa ho mitaki e oasi wa makash ka oasi. Kadao mea dex. Last one. Luza, Luza, Luza. <laughs> uh, last week we were just hobbling along on two legs man now we got the the, the trio is back uh yeah. dexy earl's three back amigos. In the, oh the three amigos are back in the house no three musketeers <laughs> oh. <laughs> you look like a mouse <laughs> Jeez. but uh whatever you gentlemen you know uh i believe we were th thinking about talking about uh some uh uh, our Indi indigenous virtues, our Dakota, Nakoda, or Lakota virtues, I believe was a, a topic of discussion. So, you know, turn it over to you fellas, uh, wherever you want the discussion to go. Oh, oh, Hachatula, Dai Chanutushka, Dai, he Hachatu. Long time no see, didn't see you for a while. You're back up here and on it and after it. I know you're a busy man, but uh, hey, you got to take time for your relatives. Look after us, help us out. Ooh. Chie, did you get that list of those uh, virtues, those seven virtues, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since you asked me, Chie, next to me. Oh, hey, Chitrilla, die, Chano. Oh, Chiki, oh, Tayu, hi, hi. Oh, Shila, oh, 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 we chuck here, oh, oh, yeah, oh, voila, and oh, sape. Oh, wisdom, yeah. And I found some other ones that are interesting. That I'm working on, Waik Sape and Waching Sape. I made songs, songs with words in it like that. And huh. resource people I went to are gone, but I never got clarification. And then uh, we also should speak a little about wisdom, courage, mm -hmm. generosity, oh, and respect. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and so we'll that for those that are in our in our panel here that are listening to us, we'd like to appreciate all of you coming in and listening to us and helping us understand that uh, again that we talked a little bit about it last week about the onus belongs on you as it relates to our ability to uh, mature in our in our thought process, not only in our bodies, the ability to grow hair and stuff like that, and I create our own smells and all that good stuff, but also in our behavior, in our thoughts, in our actions. And that's that what that uh, character development is all about. It helps us understand that there's a purpose in our dedication that we um, 
can really realize that it should be important to us as a personal individual. And then we can take that and share it, eh? share that with, with all of, of, of our people that are near and dear to us under the auspice of um, the emotion they call. Well, a lot of these, these um, uh, virtues are, are about that uh, love, caring, sharing, compassion, empathy, uh, all that good stuff. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And again, to apply those, uh, the reason we, we chose this to, to go forward is the courage and the strength it takes to actually express or actively participating in exercising those virtues. You know, it's easy to blame others and talk about them and say this, but if you really, truly, sincerely, with some sense of commitment that goes beyond you, then it comes down to something that is for the sake of the greater good. And then it can help the whole, uh, the whole group, the whole crew, this whole tribe to, to get along and, and enjoy the diversity that exists there based on the uniqueness, not only of uh, our languages and our ceremony, but also, also our personal uh, actions and our behavior and our thoughts. And we promote that through this exercise of, of trying to, to to be a common person, Ekchewichasha, and in re, as it relates to including ourselves in that Changleshka, that circle of life, or however you refer to it, and helping become part of the solution and not maintaining that sense of a, 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 basically it's based on fear. You know, and when we get this fear instilled in us, uh, that, that becomes very easily controlled. And a lot of people that are trying to make you afraid are really trying to control you but once we go beyond that understanding the importance of critical thought then we realize we have the right of our own integrity we have the right to to be perceptive of how we see the center or in this case how we see life and we have a right to not infringe on anybody else's right to to exist or 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 participate in that but just to kind of be able to have the courage and, and the strength to share our perspective and that affords you that right of your own integrity and with that it's a very respectful thing because what that shares with the older people uh the winuk chalapi we chak chalapi won't speak yahenitao those your teachers it shows them that you're really uh, trying to exercise and become strong and again, my relatives, make yourself strong. Your relatives are kind of depending on you for that. And so when you become a leader, those, those that terms like that become very, very uh, important to you. And then again, it's easy to blame others, to look outwardly and blame them. But when you look inwardly and you start uh, addressing and taking on that responsibility of being a human, then you realize uh, uh, how, how much you impact not only your own family, your tiwahe, but also your tioshpae and also your tribal or your community uh, people that uh, surround you. And then you become representative of that. So that's what I wanted to share, kind of get along those lines. And I think, uh, Chie, if we start, start from the top and just go down or, or the ones that you wanted to accentuate, that would be fine as well. But uh, um, I'll turn it over to, to Earl here. We, we, I, I talked to him earlier on some other issues, but I asked him to get that list uh, ready, and he got it all ready. I knew he would. Uh, he just knows everything, this guy. Hey, Holy great. Hey, Snail. You might find me on Facebook. <laughs> and then he said, uh, they asked me, they said, Tommy, how do you say Facebook? I said, Inte uh, Wawapi. Uh, that's picture. Oh, which it is. That's how, is that how they refer to as picture, Earl? Uh, I think. Ete uh, wowapi. Ete wowapi is well, picture. Yeah, you can, you can, when somebody says that, they can, they can understand. Still Facebook, eh? Picture is ikpazo. Ikpazo, show it to me. Ikpazo, yeah. Ikpazo, yeah. yeah show ikpazo it is, yeah. Uh, there's a song like that, you know. Oh. Anyway. How? Oh, why not? Yeah, yeah. When we. When we start at the beginning of the top of that list, I mean, you can just practically go to any one of them. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things that I, I look at when I work with the word, and even though I don't know what it means or whatever, it's always my, uh, how would you say, it, instinct to take the word and start breaking it apart. Mm -hmm. and, and in order to remember it, 
I share a uh, story how I, it became part of my life. Oh, I bet you too. You know, when we were raised as kids, you know, our father was very uh, animate about us being strong. Oh. So he raised us, uh, the kind of encouragement he gave us is you got to be strong. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be crying around, you know. Yeah. You know, so you take the word check, yeah, and that means to pray. Oh. Now, the whole part, I'm still trying to figure that out where that came from, but I know it's a, a start, strong lean to the religious aspects, influences on our lives. Who put the woe, you know? And, and so whenever the things like this came out, the, the way they express it was, oh, check, yeah, they'd say. So we learned it that way. But when I look at it, check, yeah, it means the same thing. Not no, It's not that phil, uh, philosophical when you use check, yeah, but when you put a woe in front of you, you make it a real awesome, you know, experience. Yeah. So oh. check, yeah. When you're being raised, you say, don't you cry. Now you be strong, you know, don't you tough it out, you know. You're a cowboy, you're a you tough it out. Huh. My little brother ran across a, them days, tables were square and they put, kind of corners were really sharp, you know, and he was running like that and there, he hit his head on the corner of it and these big lumps are showing up on his head. And he started just about ready to cry. And then that's when my daughter, my auntie spoke up and says, Che Chanel, you lock hot dog still. You're a cowboy. Tough it out. You'll be strong. He said, Che Chanel. So he fought it off, fought it off. And he just, that's the way we were raised. Uh-huh. We were raised to be competitive, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing like the thrill of tackling somebody on the field, throwing him down and Slapping on the hind side and said, okay, let's do it again, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raised that way. I won. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? So as we grew up and we started becoming that phase where our, our emotions as grown ups started developing, and we have a sense of looking past and thinking about things. I was uh, very fortunate to have counselors that knew of these things. Specifically, Jean, then out my counselor, one of them, uh-huh. Richard, yeah. Marsha. Oh. And they educated me about the word chekia. You know? So it comes from the word chea. It means to, to cry. Yeah. And so uh, check or chekia means to don't be afraid to show your emotions, you know. You know, you don't have to be to be a man, you got to learn how to pray. And when you pray, you realize that it, everything is put into those prayers. Your emotions and everything that needs to be to be healed will come true. Yeah. And so after I learned that, then the word wachekia became part of my life. Made sense, yeah. Heartfelt yeah. cry, Gabado. Yeah. So when it first happened to me was my daughter's birthday, so... Her and I went out, ate out, then we went to a movie. And the movie was called Eight Seconds. Oh, wow, yeah. And it was a very trough. emotional film. You know, I never yeah. seen it or didn't even know about this guy. Yeah. But that's what she wanted to see. So I'm sitting here in the theater, and when it comes to those departures, you know, that famous bull rider, mm-hmm. a lot of people were crying. Oh. And in my stomach, that emotions start coming out but i'd been there before but i didn't want to show this in public uh-huh. what? because my daughter was crying as i'm sitting there you can feel the you know the ambience you could feel it all over the theater yeah people yeah. were really struck by the scene and you know tears were flowing and they were, they were healing sensitized oh. but i fought it off you know and everything calmed down the movie continued i thought, I thought it was okay then at the end of the movie, his friend took his place at the championships and he rode that bull for eight seconds. Tough, yeah. You know, and then I was getting emotional again. Yeah. Why? I don't know. But anyway, when he took his hat off and started slapping that bull on yeah. the head, what is yeah. that? I was the only one crying in the theater. <laughs> yeah. 
Through the ceremonies, through the sun dances, and all that. I still even like the it. The ability uh. to even to speak of it. Uh huh. You know, this is something we need to encourage the young people. You know, to encourage them that this is a natural <laughs> process for ourselves yeah. to yeah. spiritually and physically heal. You know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I pass that word around, and I think that's significant because what can I say? You know that. Ready, you know? Yeah, you know, Brother Matt, uh, Chie, that, that's, that's a very honest, true experience, personal experience. And we understand the importance of that, like uh, a heartfelt cry or, or humbling yourself. But the key thing in that, as, as we're learning about this leadership ability, is for the sake of others, wishes for others. So, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And, and see, and that's what it is. And, and then when we do that, it becomes healing. Because again, yeah. the process in which, which we go through, the way we think, we don't do these things for ourselves. Well, check you, heartfelt cry, humbling yourself for the sake of others based on your wishes of good things for them. And it's kind of like that. It's a really a, a, a holistic approach. And like what my older brother here is explaining to us is helping us understand that on a personal level, we need to help us understand as human beings, the only difference between us and animals is that we as human beings can kill from a distance. Other than that, we're basically all the same. We're common. We're common to that because we believe we're in the creator's eyes. We're all the same. That's why we refer to ourselves as um, our, our common people, our Indians or, or spiritual people, if you will, for another way to term that as opposed to being ethnocentric and claiming Indians, but just common people. So again, once we understand that ability to wuchekia, and it's again, not necessarily for ourselves. And you know that you'll hear uh, spiritual leaders say, and don't forget yourself, which I'm not in here for myself. I'm in here for, for others that are sick and having a tough time and whatnot. And hopefully in a good way because you do it unconditionally that you'll receive something uh, that is very humbling to you as it relates to good health, good life, good relatives, all that good stuff. But, but going beyond that fear, remember I mentioned that fear earlier, that's very controlling. Well, it's us, green, we go yeah. beyond that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so in that, so how do you feel about that little understanding, Chie? Well, the first indication is that, you know, when you raise that, the certain terminology in Lakota and Dakota and Lakota, uh -huh. you, know, you uh, develop a, an understanding that how this all coincides with another. <laughs> Experience one balances with another. Oh. It's, all, it's all interrelated. Like being a, living by a concept of being uh, a common man, first man. Mm -hmm. you know, that has its boundaries too. Yeah. yeah. Like there are opinions you may have that you'd like to express about things in their surrounding areas that you don't see as being the right thing for people. Yeah. But you can't interfere. Oh. And the only other way that becomes a, a means in which to communicate is with the use of tobacco. Oh, I had your to. Your acceptance of the responsibility that is asked of you. Yeah. Knowing when to say no. I, I know that for for a fact because, you know, you just can't uh, help everybody all, is, you know, is to come yeah, yeah. bombarded. Uh -huh. Do uh, you have to say, huh? Eh? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, you know, like I'm not yeah, yeah. in full health yet, you know. And so you have to turn a lot of that down. And then the irony of it is, too, that we talked about fear. Mm -hmm. We have too many of our generations below us that don't understand how to operate or to overcome that. Yeah. Find that balance or that harmony. 
so they can go out and educate themselves through resource people. They get intimidated, but that's ingrained behavior. When yeah. we talk about colonization and all that, they're kokipam. That's the word. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah. What they don't understand, they don't know how to quite deal with. Yeah. yeah. So that terminology that comes next is the word wa'ushila. Ah, oh, man. Wa'ushina, wa'ushina. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Be able. So I've kind of taken that and kind of broken down a little bit. And so the law part is the, uh, the feminine gender part of the word law of asking. And, and ishi means when you ask something, someone asks of you to, to help them or do something for them. Mm -hmm. Ishila. Uh -huh. You want to announce for them or you want to you know, say, like say at a ceremony, you want to talk about the qualities of this person participating and they come and offer tobacco and they, you accept it, then you, you're, you know, you made a commitment. Mm -hmm. Ishila. And so when you put U in front of it, then it becomes you're part of it now. The Unshila, you know? Yeah, you belong to it, yeah. Yeah, so the Wa Unshila part, all right, kind of represents first person, self inclusion, and the Ishila. Yeah. So Wa Unshila, to me, in my own mindset, is that give me purpose. Oh. Give me, give me, give me something, goal. Something Good explanation, yeah. And if you look at all the different translations, they say, well, means, uh, you know, like uh, you're asking for uh, handouts or you're asking for something. Yeah, pitiful. And, yeah, pity. Yeah. 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 They always say, umashike. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. You're not that bad off. You're breathing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and uh, this guy walked in and he was hustling for a drink. He goes up to my missus and hugs her. Oh, cousin, oh, you know, it's been a long time. And it's a kid woke up and he said, "Oh, uh, how are you?" You know. So uh, when they were done, he come towards me and he extended his arms, he's going to hug me and give me the same rap. I looked at him. I said, uh, "Are you hungry?" He looked at me and said, "I don't want check it. I need you. You want someone to pray for you?" Yeah. He looked at me again. He said. The oil should I said, I can help you with that. Yeah. Once eat, I said, or a prayer. He said, I can help you. And I said, you have to bring me tobacco. Oh. He looked at oh, me yeah. like that. He put his head down and he walked away. Yeah. You know, so having not having the understanding of those values and those things, we have yeah. a long way to go. Yeah. You'll have a lot of people who are afraid to ask. Yeah. So, but that's all ingrained, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Lots. see, once once we get over that fear, and see, that's what our podcast is all about. Or every week we try to address something. So it provides that clarity. That's what dispels that fear. Fear brings about anger. Anger brings about all these uh, uh, skullduggery and these acts of negativity and all that good stuff. But if you provide clarity, you dispel that fear. And then... You can step up and uh, again, uh, you, you can work on yourself and bring out the best in you kind of like that. And like what Chia is talking about, that language, if you don't understand it and you don't understand what it even is implying by breaking it down the way he broke down what Chekia, we don't realize personally what they're asking of us to to empower me with something give me purpose that again that's that's a wangushila. but uh you know hokshila that they say that's uh he goes around and tries to help every all everybody all the time at Gyabado, the hokshila. that's what that is referenced to is something like that because little boys are just busy at that stage of their life and not knowing what they're doing but again just some examples of those things and so what we're doing right here is we're helping us all understand that purpose and that dedication that each and every one of us as individuals have, and now how we collectively bring that together. And we we're talking about last week, uh, Chie, we spoke a little bit about um, that the political agenda and the personal agenda. Uh, I'm one of the most 
political people there is, and I have a lot of personal agendas too. But one thing that I was taught is you shouldn't bring those to a spiritual gathering. Okay? Mm -hmm. Th those those got another arena. They they can go over there. You can be that way over there. But to here, you want to bring that respect, that self esteem, that self respect, that dignity, that honor. Well, that's, uh... Yeah, yeah, to maintain that that sense of uh, integrity that we represent. Now, now that's what we are talking about the virtues about. So, chano Oh man, I remember another experience my father-in-law told me. You know, when I first met my father-in-law, see, my missus is uh, from Fort Dakota. Oh, Cap, yeah, Cap. Yeah, he walked again. My my, huh. wife, oh. my missus said. Talk to my dad, she said. He, you'll understand. Yeah. So I begin our relationship with language. Anyway, but no homework. Okay, he said. Uh, uh. He used to go to the uh, <coughs> call it the uh, local uh, White Horse or no White House. Uh, it's a shopping little small, little mall. Oh. First time when he walked in the door, that we, one of the enroll members or one of the Dakota or would be standing. Oh my, she could. Oh uh. my, she. <laughs> right away, change, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, my father in law, Christmas spirit, he'd help give him, him out. Yeah. He had, you know, oh, here. One year, years later, he went in there. Oh, how? He said, Oh, my shikado, oh, my shikado, you know. <laughs> he looked in his wall, his pockets, you know. He looked around. He Juanice, Juanice. <laughs> the other guy, so he looked in there and he had a $5 bill in there. Yeah. He went over and looked at him, grabbed him. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> we're even. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> yeah. It went the other way. <laughs> that should do. <laughs> uh, you owed me this, remember? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to topic here. Do you know that? When you get go through all these values and you think about and you find, look for a, a word that makes your day or if you've done something good or help somebody, uh -huh. you know, you go into what they call it, oh, voila, you know that? Oh, oh, there you Harmony, go. Harmony, that, mm -hmm. that peace you have that in yeah. your mind set. When you say your evening prayers and morning prayers, you, mm -hmm. you have that. And knowing that you're going to face the day, there are things that are going to challenge you. Yeah. Even within your own family. Yeah. Yeah. You say, uh, I'm going to go check the mail. I say, well, you come right back. They're gone for four hours. Five, six hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long does it take to go check the mail? It's only a mile away. Oh, okay. hey, where'd you check mail? Why not? He oh. <laughs> <laughs> went to the grocery store. Where'd you go? Bismarck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's self-explanatory. If you're patient long enough, there's reasons why it took so long. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You prepared for that. So you, you take it with a grain of salt, you know, where that yeah. came from, I don't know, but that's, that's a good analogy. So anyway, so this, the word wahola is a harmony and peace, and that, that shows up mm -hmm. in Sundance songs. Oh. Very, very well put, you know, that harmony and balance that you're looking for down here from from, from the, uh, how would you call it, Ocha, uh, or just different names for it, but circuit road or spirit path like that kind of thing mm -hmm. you, you get that that harmony and that balance and that peacefulness so that's a very to me that's a very uh means to have that harmony within yeah. yourself to keep yourself getting too stressed out yeah you know because that's such that's a big issue now you know when you go especially into now in this you know, closed in time yeah doctor, yeah when they're you know this is medical issues i have the first question they ask me how are you feeling? Yeah. And even on the questionnaires, they say, are you feeling suicidal? Yeah. So yeah. One of the questions they ask, are you under any stress? Yeah. You know, and I look at them, I says, uh, well, I don't know, what do you mean stress? He says, well, do you feel upset? Things happening? I said, yeah. He said, that's a human behavior, I think. I said, but I found the tools, I say. Oh. And they say, what do you mean by that? So we have a lot of educating to do, especially in, a, in our own communities of people that are just somehow 
don't quite step over that or to get that fear and put it in its place so they can learn something. Yeah. One of the things that I that I have always exercised was is to listen, listen carefully because we were taught that way. You want to allow God, they'd say, huh. It makes sense to you. Listen to me now when I'm telling you something because you may not understand it now, but in the years to come, he said, you'll understand it. And that's come true. Yeah. 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 Totally. That's come true. Yeah. My Uncle Bill, who uh, kind of influenced me in my singing, which there's others too, but him was the main one. He said, whenever people are asked of you to do something, you do your best. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, if they ask you to sing, do your best. He said, because when you get old and you can't sing anymore, he said, you can always look back and tell yourself, I've done my best. I did yeah. what, I, what I was taught. And be know? comfortable with that. Yeah. 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 So Edge that's what I'm, oh. mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for my voice to come back. Yeah. A little raspy, but it's better than what it was. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You're getting stronger. Yeah. That's why, Chie. It's getting yeah. stronger. Yeah, you're getting yeah. your health back. Yeah. <clears throat> the biggest surprising and strongest word I, I used last week was, <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> when the beater won that ball game, I said, <laughs> 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 $100 bill. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of. Yeah, there was, oh, yeah. Of, you know, and then generosity or the truth. Well, there you go, that. Oh, yeah. Whoa, we chuck. Whoa, we chuck. Oh, the truth. Oh. So, whoa, we chuck. Like he's glad lies. Whoa, we chuck. we chuck. Yeah. What's being said is the truth. You know, brother man, in, in respects to that truth, it's, it's, uh, we, we've actually witnessed, even on TV, and all these people talking, and they're just lying and lying and lying and lying. And then they must think we're stupid. I mean, you have to look at yourself and say, I'm not that dumb. But look how many people do follow that. You yeah. know, there's a little, there's little analogy. This, these guys are all running over this cliff. They're all in a big line running over this cliff. And one guy is running back the other way and they're all laughing at him. Ah, look at him. And they're making fun of him because he's running away from the cliff. And, and that's what it kind of looks like is those guys don't even know where they're going and yet they're going there. But the thing of it is, I walk with the truth. And in that, that's, that's the representation of when somebody says, Wama Dakota, Lakota Himacha, or, when they say that to me, I look at them and say, oh, okay, he walks with the truth. Because that Dakota, Nakona, Lakota, that's what it represents is somebody who's got the integrity to carry on and the strength to carry that dignity and honor of the truth. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot, lot of our, our people uh, have went to the politi political side. It's, you go in that arena, it's okay to lie. They're all lying. They're all okay, lying. Nice. Trying to make it impressionable and, and be, I'm the best person. A lot of virtue signaling over there. That's why it's not fair to this concept that we're going is to try to bring politics in because it's going to ruin it if we do. So you we're really trying, yeah, we're really trying hard to keep that, maintain that apolitical attitude here because again, we're, we're wishing to develop ourselves in a true sense of what is really the truth. Not my truth, not Machia's truth, not uh, Toshka's truth, but your own truth based on critical thought. How have you processed the information you took in and how is it coming out? Is it coming from your heart or is it just coming from your mouth? Eh? You know, they say that on this day, I'm going to speak to you from my heart because that's where the truth comes from. And then they would say, if I spoke to you from my mouth, I would try to impress you. 
but I'm speaking to you from my heart, so I would like to affect you. That's the basic philosophical understanding of this Dakota, Nakota, Nakona way of life and what we aspire to. Would you agree with, agree with that, Chie? Yeah, that's a uh, oh. lot of people observation was years ago, they, they observed uh, these new people, like the Lord Iyashicha, you know, the man yeah. of the, uh -huh. the bad things. Or they <coughs> characterize things like, like Kisula. Uh -huh. And you grow up hearing those words and songs and singing them and stuff. And when I was out in Hawaii, I met a Japanese guy that was in a real estate business. And he was interested in these, these types of things we're talking about. Yeah. And so he asked me one time, he said, now, I'm going to ask you something. He said, why do you call us one brains? <laughs> yeah. No, Kisola. Ah, adjective. I said, why, why do you call Japanese people Kisola? I said, well, I said, one brains, you know, you know. And back he said, well, we don't do that. He said, that's Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you what know, we saw. Yeah. the United States, but... And when I asked around, they said it's a generic term for all yellow race people. Oh, yeah. But I don't think that's the, that hits it on the nail either because mm -hmm. AOZ was a word that was used around here to refer to the Chinese. Because I have relatives that are part Chinese because of the railroad, they worked in railroad. In AOZ? Railroad. Yeah, AOZ. AOZ. What they know Coming yellow? Is, yeah, because all the labor they did and sweat, the armpits would turn yellow. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Z. Oh, Z. Oh, I thought it's coming yellow. I thought it's, <laughs> next well, it means armpits. You no, know, that we call them yellow people. We yeah, know, true. You know, yeah, red people, yeah. black people, you know. Yeah. And right now, those people are seeing it tough because of their. What they call that fancy word for racism for the, against them now they're saying yeah. tough because of attitude. You know, people for some reason are taking it out of the Orientals for whatever reason that yeah. is. But I have relatives who are part Chinese. Oh, Mija, Mija. I'm part French. Oh. That's the part of me that we oui, we oui, I don't understand, you know. Other than just my complexion. Lighter skin. Shagada, Sagada, that's how we say it up here. Yeah. But there is an older word for that. It has to do with the, when they eat, all that grease comes down there. Yeah. There's a, there's a word for it that's older than that. Shagada. You'll remember it that, eh? Used in a derogatory way. Oh. Huh. Ethnocentric attitude, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Always critiquing other people, but that balance that we have to. And still in the youngest that we can't do that but that's that's the other aspect of being a you know our, our teachings that we cannot discriminate and be prejudiced against other races no now there there is there is a lot of uh how would you call it uh i can't think of the word right now but we're taught to be a it's all ingrained in the behavior that has been brought to our attention I was asked one time, do you feel any prejudice going here to this, this school? And he was an educated man. And I looked at him, I said, I thought about it, and I said, you know, I said, we go to school together, we play ball together, and we eat together, and we communicate, see each other every day. I says, I've never seen it exercised here. Yeah. I think what you're talking about is what you're experiencing outside of school. Oh. I said, I don't, I can't tell you truthfully if I ever experienced something racial. And so I said, but I'll think about it. I said, I'll think about it, see if I can remember. And in time, I noticed that the ball teams, they would never let more than two, two Lakotas play and be on the first five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. There were things like that go on that we were not attuned to, you know? So I think that the compassion, you know, be able to, so how would you say it, put it 
in a place where you can balance it out in your own life. Yeah. Because it's 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 getting wild out there, man. You know, you got people speaking of different values of our people and don't even pronounce the words right. You know. Oh, oh. You know, Chie, one of the things that um, we we uh, what we're trying to convey here in a respectful way uh, and remaining apolitical or apersonal uh, is we're wanting them to understand the importance of these things that we speak about that may have a negative connotation to them. Those things are all a learned behavior. Eh? They, yeah. We were learned how to be a racist and, and colored people of color can't be racist anyway, but we were taught those things on how to be that way, but it's against our nature. That's why I have so much uh, uh, belief in genetic memory. Uh, people talk about historical trauma and all that good stuff, but I think uh, genetically it's in our blood to really carry on a lot of these more positive spiritual characteristics of who and what we are as a people as it relates to our belief of uh, being indigenous to this North American continent. And, and then sharing that technique of survival, what we have learned throughout the ages with those that are having a tough time, eh? And and in that, that's why uh, you know, they, they took the fat because it, they were hungry. We were, it was based on observation. Gesuna, that was based on those yellow people having that one braid. That's how we refer to them. The Germans couldn't speak good English because they had their own language, but Iasicha, that's what they were called, you know, and, and be, but it was observation. And based on that, Dakota Nakona Lakota is referenced to be being an ally, being your friend, going to help you out in times of need. And that's how we look at ourselves. And genetically, it's all instilled in us. And, and but we got to work at getting it out. Chante o agalake, got to speak from our heart and help us to understand the importance of that spirituality based on chake that 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 truth that that we carry and see that's why I have a strong belief in genetic memory and again uh, uh, it's something that uh, we're wishing to convey for the sake of the individuals that are participating to process that information and again afford yourself the right of your own integrity and then interpret it as you see fit how it applies to you not trying to become a holy man or a priest or a pope or but just being a common person and that and that's Toshka, does that make sense to you? You're just quiet back there. You're yeah, sitting there sure. listening. Toshka. I yeah. as, as I absorb things, you know, I'm making notations here because uh -huh. it's always good. It's always good to uh, for me, and I'm always that's my habit. And I make notations of things because you know when you get in a certain age, you start forgetting things. Oh, me too. Me too. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, it gets you in trouble too. Uh huh. <laughs> when you call your missus by the wrong name, yeah. huh? She's uh, What's your name again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drive over you on the road, huh? But anyway, is there something I'd like to do something with? And then, uh, don't always, be afraid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, don't don't be afraid to try. Oh, hatch it too. That's even yeah, better. Yeah, because don't I've be afraid to try. Of my students, uh, some of the kids may not pronounce the words correctly, and see other kids laugh. Mm -hmm. I intervene and tell them, you know, we're not laughing to make fun of you. You're laughing because it's it's just human being. You know, we're being yeah, human, just being human just nature. Oh, huh? Huh? you know. Uh -huh. that, you're manu manu happy. Yeah, yeah. Manu manu happy pepper. <laughs> yeah. When I was young, I couldn't say aluminum, you know. Yeah. Aluminum is how you said it. Aluminum, yeah. So relatives knew it, so they teased me about it. But there was a word here that came to mind. Is nihasa we, nihasa ni. And that's a reference to your to your wife, you know? eh? Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a lot to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I want to work on that one and break that one down. You know, that's one of the things I, I, I teach is that you look for modifiers. Uh-huh. Me using a word refer, usually refers to self 
first person I and me is second person. All right, so Vihasa me would be my my uh, partner, my spouse. Nihasa me would be your spouse. And my other skin, Gabado. Nihasa me would be the third person, you know? But you don't want to go any further than that, but maybe they did years ago because men had more than one. Oh, um, huh. That's just true. Yeah. yeah. You know, Mihasani, what they shared with me was it means my other skin. And it kind of like a, the, the, the protector, like a, the, kind of keep you comfortable on your other skin. It's not you know, one of my, my uh, teachers on the Nakona side said, uh, don't refer to your wife as Tawiachu, Tawiachu. He said, I said, why? I said, no, just don't use that. And then he went on to explain why. But again, I said, uh, well, Tawiachu, that's um, the woman he captured, Gabado. But I, I don't know if that's even fair to say, uh, to literally translate it like that. But that's the way I looked at it. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not kind of misogynic or anything like that. I don't want to capture another woman. So I don't use Tawiachu as re reference to my significant other. Mihasani is how I use that. My other skin uh, as it relates to being a part of it. And you can have two, three, four, five, six other skins that are a part of your understanding in that uh, circle to, to understand that we're matriarchal. So we need these women in our life for this, the purpose of strengthening oneself to gain that understanding as a, uh, and, and that, at that time, I was a tribal leader and a spiritual leader and all that good stuff and doing all this stuff. And I needed the, all of these women around me, but everybody right away, they got, oh, he's got this many wives. And I shouldn't have referred to them as such, but I should have explained it, but I didn't. And of course, their minds went dirty and all that good stuff, but didn't realize that as a tribal leader, you need that support that's out there, especially from the female perspective. And every decision I made, I never made for myself. I made it for the sake of the seventh generation with the understanding that I had input from the female perspective. Eh? But nobody would pursue it. Instead, what they did, because I was so culturally oriented and utilized that system to work for me, um, they, they start calling me a racist. My own tribal leader, <laughs> and to now I can laugh about it, but at the time, and I wouldn't defend myself because I recognized they just didn't understand my concept. And I wasn't going to infringe or impose on them. If that's the way they want to believe and call me a racist, then they could. But they were denying these very educated women an understanding or an influence on the decision-making process that I had established myself because every one of these ladies that I referred to as my wife, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have said uh, significant other or mihasani. They, they're all educated with a master's degree or above. And what they were really saying is these women are stupid and they weren't actually, they were so essential in that decision-making process for the sake of the seventh generation in, in my leadership position that they didn't want to recognize that. Instead, they just wanted to call me a racist, eh? Yeah, and of course, yeah, yeah. And I, of course, I just played it off with sarcasm. I said, I'm not a racist because I golf. And, and, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have respected a, a, a very responsible um, um, understanding of where I was coming from. But at the time, but they, they took off. It, that's that political agenda I speak about. That's why I understand it can ruin these good things. You think, Chie? Yeah, well, we're human beings, you know, we make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the memorable ones is when we look at lives and things that we've done in a humorous way, you know? Uh -huh. The uh, anthropologist named Mardian was spoken in Mary College many years ago. Gee, we, when the United Tribes first started, he said uh, there was a story about the boats coming up the river and eventually they needed wood. Yeah, operated their boats, hauling cargo and passengers, horses, and all that stuff. And here, this family left their uh, relative home to watch the house, log cabin. Yeah. And so they were gone some time, and they came back, and here, their house was gone. And 
<laughs> they, God, they left for watching and thought, you know, they would be handier if they had the monster's car. So he sold their house to this. <laughs> for a wood, <laughs> to the steamboat. <laughs> Oh, crap. <laughs> savages, man. I'm telling you, those guys are savages. Man. <laughs> yeah. Now it's all flooded, so maybe it was that for the best. Well, maybe it was meant to be that. Yeah. <laughs> savages, you guys are all savages. Yeah. You know, so laughter and happiness and, and oh. harmony is essential. People who made the comment, they said, you're always, you're never serious. I said, correct. Life is serious enough. I said, I got to have my I have to have my laughs, man. I like to make, Jota. Yeah. I like to make people laugh. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Toshka laugh. Elijah, you're sitting back there. Dago Yachi, what do you hey, want? Man. You want something? Why not? Okay. Uh, uh, I was listening to, to you gentlemen uh, respectfully, uh, just because you guys are uh, talking about some pretty serious stuff, these virtues. And uh, I know you, both of you have a lot of experience, especially ceremonially. So I think hopefully our um, the participants listening can really absorb that. And uh, from what I got out of it, uh, uh, Wahala, yeah. one of them, harmony, yeah. harmony, uh, Wachekia, Wawichake, oh, uh, Wawichake, truth, truth, yeah. and Wawunshila, yeah, or Wawunshida. So those four, and it looks like there's another three. Maybe we'll we'll visit um, maybe next week, Doksha yeah, next yeah, week. Yeah, there you go. But um, yeah. So hopefully our students, that I think that's super important. You know, those virtues for the, uh, your development as leaders, okay. whether you formally uh, take positions of leadership, at least this is just how I view it. You know, like even if uh, you, you know you don't formally have those positions, like uh, as individuals, I think that's kind of something we should aspire to. And I, I was listening to another individual um, use an expression, "Ohini wieya manke, oyagaknika." Oh, nice. Uh, I was told me to always be ready. Yeah. Kind of like Nake Nula Wangu, kind of like that. But Oh, I was told that that means like to, I'm always ready. I, I'm always ready. Okay, okay. But like, um, okay. you know, I think there's something that kind of adds to the discussion and hopefully our students could aspire to live these virtues in a good way. So, kind of like I can do it, eh? Yeah. Uh, the Ohin as always, you know, Make means to be sitting. And so we are a word referring to waiting, getting ready. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So See, that, that that's a Dakota word, word eh? Yeah, well, it depends on so many different words used for different aspects, you know, but uh, I've heard that word used in my history. Yeah. 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 You know, because a woman's always ready, huh? Yeah, yeah. See, that applies there. So, Toshka, that, and, and again, those are words, but that's, however they shared that with you, that's how you use it. That's how, that's how you refer to it as, eh? Like when I, when I pray, I use Assiniboine, Sioux, Dakota, Lakota. I use them all, man. <laughs> oh, shit, I eat them all. Uh, Suzanne, Eden, raised hand. Uh, Suzanne, I don't know if I can, uh, maybe, uh, you have a question do you want to put it in the chat are, are you comfortable joining us on the video chat i can uh let's see if i gotta find you real quick suzanne allowed to talk okay suzanne you are in the house join us directly through the video just unmute this yourself. is sissy <laughs> this ain't suzanne this is sissy sissy is in the house yeah, yeah. you are able sissy if you have a question maybe she she was just pranking me maybe when she raised unmute her. your my mic my mom is outside right now oh okay well tell her to come oh. in she's uh <laughs> if she had a question <laughs> sorry that was not supposed to be on oh you raised your hand we was trying to hook you up oh, okay yeah. okay no problem suzanne no problem sissy okay that's the name of that too. That's how that goes. So, um, so yeah, we're at the top of the hours. Anything else you gentlemen want to? Hey, did we give away our code and our fire thing or no? I don't think we did. We're going to have to uh, do a drawing real quick here. 
because I wore my coat just for that reason. Uh, did Earl get his coat yet? Chie, you get your coat yet? Yeah. Chie, Ogala, Ogala, you hahe. You watch, Ash, it's really saggy. I ordered it too big. <laughs> I keep forgetting I lost a lot of weight. Yeah. So I gave it to my son. He wears it around. He helps out a lot. So. Oh, good, welcome. good. Oh. I will have to send out that that right size then. Yeah, right? Send a medium or a large then. Yeah. 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 The only thing is uh I put it on to the shoulders way down here. Not that big. <laughs> <laughs> oh huh. Um uh I think we'll we'll wrap it up then, gentlemen. I appreciate uh the good discussion, all the students that are with us here. I know we normally do our, our drawing, and what I'll do is uh, after we're uh, we're done with this podcast, we'll do the drawing. I'll put it right in the new the, the feed for this um, on the Facebook post, oh, and, and we'll okay. send it out. So yeah, then I'll re-announce it next week. So we'll have two drawings. There you go. Next you're week. a good man. Heck yeah! I don't care what they say about uh, me. Toshka, <laughs> yeah, you're a good man. We don't know what you're good for, but you're a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pedama. Midakwepi doksta kewachia kapikte. Oh, doksha ke. Oh, chia joke, dog shark. Adios. Hey, 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 hey,